And so I was on oxygen. Just as they got to the hospital, they ran out of oxygen, I died. Hold on, you died? I died. Is this your first time encountering a venomous snake since the bite incident? Yes. Just don't point it this way. Oh, oh my that. God. He's yawned right at oh, you. Oh, no. Today's episode is brought to you by Survival First Aid Kits. I'm on Australia's Sunshine Coast, and I'll be interviewing Leela, a woman who knows firsthand the dangers of interacting with a venomous snake. She's a bite victim survivor who nearly lost her life, and today, she's going to be sharing her incredible story. Now, what Leela doesn't know is that we're also going to be getting her face to face with a deadly snake whose venom, believe it or not, ultimately saved her life. For you, this all began in 1974, the day it all happened when you were bitten by a venomous snake. Can you take us back to that morning when you were heading out to the barn, you had farm animals and you were, you were barefoot. Like a lot of people in Australia walk around barefoot and you found yourself in the worst case scenario. Take us to that morning and tell us the story. Well, it happened in the afternoon, late afternoon, almost on dark. And I had a goat and I was putting the goat under the house. I mean, what goat wouldn't want to live underneath the house? <laughs> so yeah, I was happily putting her under the house. I had a baby and a two year old inside. Mm -hmm. And I felt this, like a pins and needles feeling, like pins and needles in my foot. And so I went inside and I thought straight away that I definitely had been bitten by a snake or a spider. Okay. I wasn't sure what. Um, the poison immediately went straight up to my head. Really? So I got a migraine headache. I've never had a migraine headache in my life. So I had this migraine headache and straight away I started to vomit. So I got the bucket and I'm leaning over the bucket vomiting and thinking, oh God, I need help, I need help. So I put my baby and my two-year-old and myself in the car with the bucket so I could keep vomiting in the bucket and go to the neighbours. And then the neighbour takes me straight to the Southport Hospital and at the Southport Hospital, the doctor thought I was, reckon I was a hippie and I was on drugs and I didn't know what I was talking about. That's an unfair judgment. Very unfair. And um, gave me a blood test and left me all night with no antivenin, no nothing. And um, I was yelling out for help because I was getting feverish and I knew they weren't doing anything for me and I was screaming out for help. I want my acupuncturist to come to the hospital. An acupuncturist in the 70s? <laughs> yeah, and the acupuncturist actually made it up to the hospital. He heard somehow on the grapevine. Certainly no text he, messaging he back came, then. No, no mobile phones <laughs> back then. He came up to the hospital and he felt, because acupuncturists, they go on your pulse. Everything's on your pulse. Mm -hmm. He felt my pulse and he felt every muscle fighting the venom. Wow. And the next morning, I had fallen into a coma and every muscle had collapsed and I couldn't breathe. And so they found the venom in my blood test and then they gave me the antivenin, but it wasn't, I, I, I couldn't breathe at this stage. Yeah. So they had to put me into an ambulance and race me to intensive care in Brisbane, which was about a hundred kilometers. And so I was on oxygen in the ambulance. Just as they got to the hospital, they ran out of oxygen, I died. They raced me up. Hold on, you died. I died, my heart stopped beating. They raced me up to intensive care and they got me going. They got me breathing. How did they get you breathing? Did they have to put a tube down into they your They had to put lungs? tubes all over me okay. and in my mouth. And they leave the tubes in your mouth for five days. And after five days, they have to do tracheotomy because uh, it can get infected. Yeah. So they had to do a tracheotomy where they open up your throat and they put a machine into your throat, a tube, and the machine is actually breathing for you because you cannot breathe on your own. So a lot of the snakes in Australia have a, a neurotoxic venom which ultimately can cause your internal system to go into a state of paralysis and collapse. And it sounds like that's exactly yeah, and what I had to I you. had big hematomas in my groins, which are big black bruises. Yeah which are hematomas are internal bleeding. Mm -hmm. So I had internal bleeding and um, I was in the coma for six days. Wow. And uh, then after that, I regained my consciousness. So the moment that you came back, let's call this day seven into your ordeal, do you remember waking up out of this coma? 
I do. I do. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm, this is a dream. Really? I'm, I'm having a dream. This can't be real. This can't be real. So once you've woken up out of the coma, like, were you just kind of like a cucumber there in your bed? Like at that point, had your muscles had gained no I control. I had no back. strength. I had no strength. They, they set me up and I just fell back down again. Wow. I had no strength at all. That I must to, have been so scary. It was a slow, a slow um, process of my muscles building back up. So you're in the coma. Um, you come out of it, and I imagine your first question to the doctors would be, do we know what kind of snake bit me? Do you know at this point which species it was? I don't know if I knew at that point, but David Flay mm -hmm. from Fauna and Flora Reserve in Burley Heads, mm -hmm. who had it for many, many years on the Gold Coast, he was an expert on snakes and he diagnosed the snake as a rough scale snake. Ooh, yeah, no rough scale snake. I mean, that aligns with the uh, symptoms that you had from the venom. And here's the thing about a rough scaled snake, very unassuming looking snake, small head, small mouth. So I could see if you got a bite from that snake, fast striking and very, very small fangs, but very potent venom. So Leela, after you get out of the hospital and you're back home, between 1974 and now, do you have any long lasting yes. symptoms? You do. Yes, I don't have any reserves. So if I go downhill, I can't pull on any reserves. I've just got to go to bed and go to sleep. In fact, I've got to lay down at lunchtime every single day. And I've got to recuperate because um, my nervous system is damaged from the snake venom. The snake venom affects your central nervous system and that's one thing is permanently damaged from the snake bite is my nervous system. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so a lot of people out there have a fear of snakes. It's called aphidiophobia. So I have to ask you, previously or now or after this experience, were you afraid of snakes or are you now afraid of snakes given that one nearly took you? I'm not afraid of snakes, no, because I love animals. Mm -hmm. I love animals and I just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Yeah. And I respect snakes. I respect all animals. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, that's a fantastic message. I think a lot of people would assume if somebody was bitten by a snake and it nearly killed them that like, snakes, this is why I don't like them. But you're right. I mean, snakes are doing an amazing thing for the planet. They are the control for all of the species that we as humans usually try to have not get into our house. All of the vermin species, the mice and different rodents. I, I believe that snakes will just want to really just get out of your road, mm -hmm. you know. They just want to get on with their life. They're not out there to kill you, you know? they're not out there to bite you. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a little something extra lined up today. I don't know if you were aware of this or not, but would you be comfortable? <laughs> we have, we a have, scale. we are in the vicinity snake. of a snake, not a rough scaled snake, oh. the tiger snake, the snake that is actually responsible for providing the venom, they create an anti-venom to save your life. Would you be up for meeting a tiger snake? Today? I would, I'd like to meet it, I don't yeah. hold it. It will be totally controlled, and if you want, you'll even be able to pet its tail. If no, you no, I don't think so. You don't think you'll pet its tail? No. You might when you see how pretty no, the snake I is. Don't know. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but <laughs> you at least seeing the snake, that's a huge step. And saying that you're not afraid of snakes, most people, had they been bitten by a snake, would have immediately said, whoa, 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 hold on, you're, you've, have, you've got a snake here in the same vicinity as me? So I love that you immediately, oh, you. I saw your eyes light up, you're like, no, thank no, no, you. I love snakes, I would love to see what this snake is. Thank so you. that is going to be the next piece of this episode, getting Leela up close and personal with the very snake species whose venom ultimately saved her life. I'm a fighter, you know. Yeah. I, I fought my way back, I reckon. Yeah. I'm here today because I'm a fighter. Okay, Leela, we've got you in the room of snakes. Now, I know you're not afraid of snakes. We've already accomplished that, but the tiger snake is going to be coming out here. Lockie's going to get it onto the floor. We're back with plenty of distance. We're going to get it inside of the tube, and you'll see how that completely controls the snake's head. So it keeps us and the animal completely safe. It's always a little nerve wracking, though, anytime one of these venomous snakes comes out of its enclosure. Ooh. 
See that? So now that the snake is in the tube, we'll work it up just a little bit further. Okay, cool. Snake is under control. And now we're going to move a little stool in for you to sit on. Right. Are you comfortable? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Lockie, we're good? Okay. Leela, feeling okay? Yeah. Okay, there it is, the tiger snake. You can see why it's called the tiger snake, that beautiful tiger pattern. Now, they come in a variety of different colors. This one specifically, I would say, is extra beautiful. It kind of looks like the white Siberian tiger version. Yeah, it's um, Leela, is this your first time encountering a venomous snake since the bite incident? Yes. It is. Wow, that's a big step. Here we are 50 years later, and you're in the room with the very animal whose toxic venom ultimately became the thing that saved your life. Wow. Hmm. How are you feeling right now? A little yeah, more nerve wracking to be in a room of snakes no, than no, it is on the porch? Fine. Totally relaxed, okay. Yeah. Now, what are the odds, do you think, that you are able to just gently pet the snake's back? Do you think you could do that? The back. The back of it. What about the tail? You can touch the tail, yeah. You want to pet the tail? Okay, yep. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, but nothing can hurt you. See how the, the snake's head obviously completely contained with inside of that tube. And this is a rather secretive snake species, so unless you're in the right place at the right time to see this snake, which as a team we are often looking to do, but for anybody out there wanting to avoid snakes, there's a good chance you'd be able to avoid this one. Oh, okay. Yeah. And when applicable, milking the venom from this species is what is saving people that are bitten. So it's pretty cool that this snake and the, the science that's being done to save lives comes from such a cool animal. Do you want to touch it on the back there? Beyond the tail, or we're working beyond the tail at this point? Pretty smooth, huh? Yeah. A lot of people think that snakes are slimy. They certainly are not. The scales are very dry, very sleek, and very powerful. You can see how it's just slowly inching itself forward in the tube. And I'm gonna let it come up just a little bit more like this. And I'm gonna let the head just peek out a tiny bit so that Mario can get that shot, but don't worry, you're still gonna be completely safe. There we go. Look at that, pretty cool to see. See that? that oh, face. Look at that. He's like, I want to just keep going. So, just don't put it pointed this way. Oh my that. God! He yawned right at oh, you. Oh, no. That was basically him saying, Oh hey, no, I'm hi. starting to feel a bit nervous Leland. now. Leland. Oh, no, nice to meet to you. you. Nice to meet <laughs> you. I feel a little bit nervous Ooh. now. A little bit nervous now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think at this point, what I would love to do is show you the proper treatment for a snake bite. Yeah, this is like a good idea. Probably a good idea to get it back into its enclosure yeah, at this I think point. So, yeah. All right, yeah. I'm going to hand the tiger. Everybody back up just a little bit there. Tiger's coming back over to Lockie. Let me know when you're comfortable. Good, okay, got it. And there we have it. I patted it. You I did, you it. did. That's a, that's I even such patted a huge it's back. I patted it's you back. Patted, yeah, you, uh, you see, and up there you're like, no, I'm not gonna be able to pat it. But then uh, you saw it, you realized, oh, it's not that scary. Can I give you a hug? <laughs> I'm so proud of you. <laughs> that was amazing. So the next thing that we're going to do is show you the proper way to bandage up one of your appendages if heaven forbid, if you were to ever be bitten by a venomous snake again. Our friends from Survival First Aid Kits have given us one of their snake bite kits. Now this you should have with you at all times, in your car, in your house, in your backpack if you're out there hiking, because this kit has the potential to save your life. Okay, so Lockie, I'm gonna have you come into the scene. I'm gonna hand you over the snake bite kit. Now Leela, most of the time, people are bitten on their hands by snakes. I know you were bitten on the foot, but we're gonna just go with a hand bite scenario. So I'm gonna turn it over to Lockie. Let's pretend, ooh, I just got bitten by a tiger snake, or in your case, a rough scaled snake. Lockie, what do I do? It first really thing, hurts. It really hurts. <laughs> Hang in there, mate. The first thing we're always gonna do is we're gonna call for help. Call through below here in Australia, emergency services on the way, make sure they know what's happened to you and they know where they are, and that's gonna make the whole staying calm thing a lot easier. The second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our snake bite kit, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna take a pressure mobilization bandage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say he's been bitten on the middle of the hand here. We're gonna start around the bite site. So we wanna go bandage around. I'm gonna take these things off first. Yeah, you can take those off, that'll okay. make it a little bit easier. If there's any jewelry, we can take that off first. 
We don't have to worry about Thanks, these Leela. sleeves here. We're just going to bandage over the top. Oh. Now the idea is we're going to start around the bite side. So we're going to go around his hand here and we're going to go two to three times around the bite side itself. Now, we want to be firm, but not too tight. I'm not trying to rip this bandage and cut off circulation. It's the same as a sprained wrist or a sprained ankle. Nice and firm. All we're trying to do here is to slow that venom down and give you plenty of time to get to hospital and get uh, anti-venom ready uh, to be administered. So all we're doing here is we started around the bite site and we're now working our way up Coyote's arm, our patient. Okay, and the idea is here, go as far up the limb as possible. So the further up the limb you go, the more time you're gonna buy yourself. Because keeping in mind, the venom is slowly moving its way through and all we're doing, adding a bit of pressure and slowing it down, buying yourself plenty of time to get off to hospital, get yourself checked out, get a doctor looking at you and get some anti-venom there ready to go. Now, I've run out of bandage. Okay, that's the end of my bandage here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tuck that in here and we're gonna grab another one. What the venom's looking to do, it's gonna move through his arm, through his lymphatic system. Eventually, if you're bitten on the hand, it's gonna get up underneath his armpit. And underneath his armpit are his lymph nodes. Once it gets to your lymph nodes, it's everywhere, okay? Now, neurotoxin is only really dangerous once it gets through to your vital organs, because what it's gonna do is it's gonna shut down those neural pathways, and eventually, in a lot of cases, you're gonna start to stop your breathing. From here, all we wanna do, first of all, I'm gonna test, I'm gonna make sure the color's coming back. If I squeeze his finger, it goes white. You see how the colors come right back? That means he still has circulation. That's exactly what we want. If we've cut off circulation, we've gone a little bit too tight. From here, I'm gonna tell Coyote, hang in there, mate, helps on the way, but keep the limb still. We don't wanna go swinging that limb above our head for obvious reasons that venom's gonna move faster. So the best thing you can do from here is de-elevate the arm, keep it down low, and stay as relaxed as possible. That's gonna slow the venom down. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do here is where he's been bitten, he's been bitten on the hand, we're just gonna take maybe a texture or you can get a little bit of dirt and you can rub on that bite site. What we want is, worst case scenario, he gets to hospital, he's lost consciousness, he can't tell the doctor where he's been bitten, um, so the doctor needs to know. If you don't have dirt, you don't have a pen, anything will do. We're gonna take a bit of plastic from our bandage and we're gonna tuck it out here. The doctors know to look for this. What they're gonna do from there is they're just gonna cut a little hole in the bandage and they're gonna take a swab and that swab's gonna tell them what anti-venom to prepare for coyote here. Okay, very straightforward. We're lucky in this country. We can do this for any species of snake. Now, if you were to go back to Coyote's home where he has rattlesnakes and he also has uh, coral snakes, which are quite similar to our species here, he's got different types of venom to think about. So if he gets bitten by a rattlesnake, he can't go and use this compression bandage. It's actually probably gonna make things a little bit worse. So again, we're actually very lucky in this country, no matter what you get bitten by, like in your circumstance, you didn't see the snake, so you can't tell the doctor I was bitten by this particular species. Doesn't matter, we treat it all the exact same way. Leela, we did it. You told your story to the world, you got face to face with the venomous snake and even touched it, not just the tail, but also the back, and you learned how to properly apply snake bite first aid. Big thanks to our friends at Survival First Aid Kits. Leela, I'm officially gifting this to you. you. Now you will know how to save people's lives into the future. I'm Coyote Peterson, be brave, stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. No one plans to be bitten by a snake, but if the worst case scenario happens, it's always good to be prepared. Survival first aid kits are the best in the business, and for over half a decade, they've been an integral part of my field safety kit. From cuts and scrapes to bites and chomps, they've got me covered. For more information, make sure to check out their website and gear up today.